Since I became a full-time professional photographer in 1980, I've worked for most of the travel magazines, including National Geographic, Travel Measure, Islands, and since then I've also done over 50 books and I continue to produce at least one book a year. Okay, folks, we're back here with Bob Holmes. Bob, thanks for joining us again. Good to see you again. It's been a long time. It has been quite a while, hasn't it? I wanted to pick some things, some random things out of this book and ask you about them. That book happens to be written by me, Advancing Your Photography. Oh, come on. And you helped me with it quite a bit with your <laughs> tips and photographs, so thank you so much. Okay, one of the first things I mentioned in the central theme of the book is visualization. Mm -hmm. And so my question to you, first of all, what is your concept of visualization? It ultimately comes back to knowing your equipment, whether it's a camera, an iPhone, whatever it is. It's knowing what, what the machinery for taking the photograph is capable of doing. In the old days, it used to be all come back to film, how yeah. film was going to record it. Now it's how your digital device records it. And until you know that, it's not really possible to visualize fully. It's, it's the ability to see something and know how it's going to record on your memory card. With that camera. Yeah, with that camera. Whether it, it, whatever, said, whatever the camera. If it's yeah. an iPhone yeah. or if it's a DSLR or mirror. So you look at, look at a scene or a person or whatever and have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like in the camera. And relating to things we've talked about in the past with light, it's knowing how light is going to react. Yeah. Know what that device is capable of recording. Because every, inst every instrument records things differently. Yeah, an iPhone is going to record things differently to a uh, higher Nikon or Canon or Sony or whatever. Yeah. So is the drill basically mm -hmm. photograph, put it in your computer and then see, so you, you actually see right away? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, be conscious of what you're doing. You know, use your, I can't stress enough how important it is to, to, to learn by taking photographs. When you visualize a photograph, you're on an assignment, let's say, are you consciously visualizing it before you press the shutter? I guess I used to. I used to go out on assignments, particularly in the 1980s, I was working a lot with National Geographic, uh, Travel and Leisure, a lot of, a lot of travel-related magazines. And I'd go out on assignment for Geographic, I'd be given 300 rolls of film. 300 rolls of film? Yeah, you know, about 300, okay. you know, on a normal job. You go out with 300 rolls of film, you'd be away for three months and haven't a clue on what you... You had no what idea. Got. But this, this is a, pr a really good point because now you see so many photographers doing this where they take a picture, immediately look at the back of the camera. They chimp. And you know. yeah, they're chimping. And instead of like, okay, you are the photographer here. You're taking the photograph. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's your vision, right? That, that why you even stood in that one location versus somewhere else. Right? Yeah. And now, it brings up another point about chimping. When you're looking at the back of your camera, you're missing the photograph in front of you. That is so true. Yeah, it's a big mistake. We thing, all do it. You can't help it. We all do it, but, and you have to look at your, your histogram and get it, dialed in. Yeah. But the, recommend, the best recommendation I know is once you do that, don't do it again, especially mm. if you're photographing people. Yeah. Because you, every time you do this, you're breaking that yeah. connection. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Very, very good point, Mark. Yeah. You, you can't afford to do that. Stay in, to get the best photographs. Stay with the person. You've yeah. done your settings. Yeah. And let them forget about the camera. Just like us, we're forgetting about the camera. What if these guys were constantly pulling our... Well, the camera's not on, are they? Here's an interesting thing. Visualization versus being spontaneous. I mean, where, where do you think there's the... Well, it's a, it's a natural progression. I say you should always be spontaneous, but that in practice doesn't happen because you have to think about things. Right. And... It comes down to the purpose of the photography. For personal photography, I think most of it is spontaneous. I react to a visual stimulus, and I can't necessarily explain why. It's like res responding, I've talked in the past about looking at certain painters yes. and getting a tremendous emotional reaction to them. The connection. And it's the same with anything you're looking at. Sometimes. You see things that you're compelled to take a photograph of. You can't necessarily explain it. And it's accumulation, you know, in my case, of 
centuries of experience. Easily. <laughs> no, it's de lit literally decades of experience doing it. And it, it's a, a culmination of that that enables you to, to respond to things in certain ways. But if, you, if I was illustrating a magazine assignment or illustrating a story for a magazine assignment, then I'd have to think a little bit more carefully about why I was taking the photograph yeah. and what I was trying to show. You, you make sure that you're illustrating things that are relevant. Well, that uh, leads to a qu another question I was going to ask you. Do you go out with a shot list when you're on assignment? Or yeah, do you just have it in your head? You have a written shot list that you prepare ahead of yes. time? Okay. Yeah, well, Which I have I recommend. what I call a shopping list. Yeah, it's a shot list. There's not a secret, but the thing we have to offer as professionals is that we may not take the very best photographs all the time, but we're consistent. And you have to come back with the goods. We have to come back with the goods. But we, we can guarantee coming back with usable photographs. Yes. And all the photographs we take, theoretically, are usable. Most of photography is serendipity. You're in the right place at the right time. The important thing is to be there. But it's that Pasteur but, quote of chance favors the prepared. It, yeah, and you have to be, we've talked about light a lot in the past, and you have to be able to recognize things when it happens. Here's a question. How do you train your eye to find a photograph? You have to be consciously aware of anything you're looking at, whether it's reality or a reproduction of reality. Okay. It can be painting other people's photographs, sculpture, whatever. Right. And consciously look at it. Ask yourself why you're attracted to that and what it is about it that you like. And eventually, over time, you'll refine the way that you see. But you know, and there's something that resonates, and then when you are out creating an image, you, you, can, you can perceive that as well yeah. in, in that moment. It, it, re, it refines your vision. Be aware of everything that you look at. Yeah. Even yeah. things like um, ads in magazines. There's an exercise that I ask people to do in, in classes you cover up your watch and tell me if your watch has a number in the number 12 position or just a mark. And most people can't tell you. Isn't that amazing? And it's something that we look at yeah, dozens of times a day. So you have to be very observant. But if you really want to improve, you have to devote yourself to it. As you do with a musical instrument, you put the same amount of time in. Absolutely. And just live it. Yeah. I just absorb everything I can. I've got a huge library of photography books that I use for inspiration. Me too. You have to be really dedicated. Yes, uh, if you don't want to take photographs at that level, that's fine. You know, but have fun with it. But it's just as much fun taking photographs at a high level, but you've got to put the time in. And with that... Bob, thanks again for joining us on <laughs> thanks, Dancing Mark. Your Photography. It's always a pleasure. God, you smooth looking devil. <laughs> I try to be. I got to keep up with you with that British accent. Uh, well, thanks, Mark. It's been fun. Hey, while Bob and I are goofing around having too much fun, this is a great time to hit the subscribe button now so you won't miss any of our upcoming episodes. You know, we love it when you share our videos, when you like us, and we love to hear your comments below. And if you don't yet have a copy of my book, Advancing Your Photography, this is a great time to pick one up. Just hit the little eye at the top right of your screen. You won't be disappointed. And be sure to follow us on Instagram. That's Bob Holmes Photo and Mark Silver. And until next time, get out and capture your own images of life. <laughs> All right. Hey, Bob. <laughs> we better get this laughter out of it. Bob, thanks again for joining us on Advancing Your Photography. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say a word. Cut it right now. <laughs>